Hey guys, I'm Wendy Elaine Wright. And today we're talking to Stuart Stone, casting director who's been casting for so many years. Can't wait to hear all the things he's going to teach us. Saying this for years. If you don't run yourself like a business, you will run yourself out of this business. <laughs> so true. If you don't I've, run this like a business, you'll run yourself out of this business. Exactly. I've quoted it. It's in every one of my books. It's in my sayings everywhere. Because it is it. a business. I mean, so many actors, you really think about it, they think it's show up and show off because it says show business, but they forget the business part. Yes, it's so important. And the business part can leave people who are very talented in the dust. If yeah, you know I mean, it was really interesting. I had an actor who wrote to me. I mean, he was in one of my, in one of the workshop that I was a guest teaching of. And it was really interesting to me that I started talking to him and he really knew the business of the business. And he was on top of his game. And I'm like, you're 21 years old and you've already, you, he just knew where he wanted to go, what he wanted to do. He, he, you know, he went after the coaches. He knew who people were. He knew what was going on before he even, you know, before he even got into the class, he was prepared. So that when I tried to question him, I'm like, well, what, who are your agents that you're trying to get with in LA? And I'm like, wow, you're going a lister. And I'm, like, and you don't have credits because, well, you know, but he knew what to do when he sent me an email to say, thank you. He knew what to send. He sent his picture and his resume. So it was right there in front. I'm like, yes. 21. I don't get 30 year olds that know how to make sure they send their marketing material every time, even if it's a thumbnail on the bottom of In your email, email you're sending. You know what I tell them to do? I tell them to drag the headshot to the front top of the email. And then when you send it, make it small. So the first thing they see is the face of the actor. Yeah. So we know who we're talking to. That's great. I mean, any place they have it, but when they do a link and they want me to click another link that takes me off of their letter, that takes me onto my, I'm like, why are you having me do all this extra work? That's one click too many. Yeah. One click too many. You've been a ca- casting director for commercials for a very long time. And your, your clients are all like huge brands. Uh, and I'm wondering like, what got you into casting in the first place? How, how did you land in that field? Oh, the story. Um, <laughs> I actually, so I wanted, so I wanted to be an actor mm. and my two favorite things were, well, I loved acting, but I, I think I was going after it for the wrong reasons. Um, You know, people saw, you know, I liked the fame and the money, um, but I didn't like the work. I didn't like the waiting and I didn't like the, you know, the driving to auditions and stuff like all the work that you need to put into it. Yeah. It was just, I just wanted the job, so to speak. Right. So I, you know, my two favorite things were the craft food service table and (laughs) catering. (laughs) And I, that's where I would hang and but I mean, I loved the work. I loved being, you know, I loved that on camera and I love the energy of a set. Yeah. But um, I was 15, 16 and my mom's running me around auditions and I was like, this is great, but I'm not booking. And I didn't really know what to do. And my parents didn't really want me in the business. So I took a few classes and I got into it, but it was, wasn't, I don't know. I just, it, I loved it, but I loved the whole industry. Yeah. So I decided, no, I'm going to go away to college because I hadn't booked my my big show yet. So I went away to college and um, had come back. And instead of that summer going to work at the advertising agency, because they gave me like, you'll start, you know, after summer. And I was never taught what to do. I didn't know what job I wanted. So they were going to put me in coupons at, uh, you know, at one of the big agencies. And I'm like, I don't think that's the place I want to go to. Um <laughs> <laughs> Only to realize I wanted to be an agency producer, but I went to some of, I started working with the casting directors who knew me from auditioning. Oh, wow. Like, you know, the people that had been there for a long time, some are no longer with us. Some, I mean, I was a kid then, right? So, so I, they had, had me come in and I slowly started, I mean, I learned the industry and I, you know, learned all about the union and all the rules and regulations. And you had to really know your stuff then. Hmm. And you didn't, there was only, there wasn't as many agents. You had to learn all the actors at all the agencies. I mean, it wasn't always pictures. It was just them pitching names. And so I um, started working with some of the, you know, top casting directors and 
which I was lucky to have known. And I, before I knew it, I was picking the people's headshots. So I was, I was actually picking the people that got to come in. Like, I'm like, should the casting director be doing this? Like I had the actors. I mean, I was in control of if an actor had an audition. I thought, wow, this is cool. Yeah. Then they would come in and I was really, I mean, I really was passionate about what they were going through. And I, really tried to help them out as best I could to get the job. And I realized I really liked doing that. And then huh. I would run the session. Then I would end up running the callbacks and meeting the directors and clients. And then at the end, the casters would go book the people that got the job. And eventually there, um, there was a, uh, a casting company called the Divisex. You probably remember them. Barbara. Yeah. Yeah. Barbara, Karen, the sister that started they're like, Stu, you need to go on your own. You've done our jobs. You've done everything. And I was working with another casting director who was, uh, who I, who was just great, uh, who was really well-known, Deborah Kurtz as well. Um, and they were just like, you need to go on your own. Like, you're doing this whole thing. And I was completely afraid. Like, I didn't want to take work from them. And I was like, mm-hmm. what if it doesn't work for me and I can't do this? Yeah. But they're like, you can always come back. So I found that I really loved casting and I never went to my long story right never went to my other job so I never went to my other job and then I realized that everything I was learning behind camera I could help others so I would you know do workshops and started helping people book jobs and realized that what I really liked doing was giving people um an acting job booking them on a commercial um helping them learn what it takes to get there and Sort of like you, I wanted everybody to win, you know? I wanted everybody to be able to to book a job, to yeah. get that, you know, that thing you want, that drive. You work so hard for it. Yeah. And if you're really in touch with who you are, and I've learned that an actor really needs to be honest with themselves, you really can't, if you fool yourself, you're you're never gonna, you're just gonna keep spinning your wheels. You gotta be in touch with. What, how good are you at your craft? What do you need to do? You need to do self evaluation all the time. I, yeah, think. yeah. And really check in so that you can and, and attend events, attend things that are free. It surprises me how many free events I'll do because I want to help out and how few people show up. I mean, when you can have 50 people and 25 show up or 100 register and you still don't get everybody there and they're getting free. advice. You know, that yeah. that we want to give and other casting directors want to give. Why do you, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. I, just, I totally a, understand what you mean. You gotta, you gotta want it with a hunger. Yeah, you're you right. Know? Like everything you said, I totally relate to because I felt the same way about acting. I didn't want to, I did theater when I was a kid and I love, be, I love every single thing about the stage, the directing, the costumes, the, I loved doing plays, but the running around all over town to audition and all that shit, I could not be, I just could not do it. Right. I didn't want to do it. I wanted to just have the job and do the work. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. And, you know, I have to be honest. I, you know, I was going on auditions and no one said, Oh, how do you handle a callback? Like no one told me what to do. Yeah. You know, a casting director who, you know, who we uh, helped get, who got me into the business, actually, you know, never really said, go get classes, learn what you need to do. And there wasn't a lot of commercial workshops then. No. And I didn't know what to do when I went back. So I really didn't know how to handle things. And that's the thing. If you don't know what to do. How can you do it well? How How can can you do it well? well? Exactly. You so teach classes, thing. you write books, you know, you've had two books. I, I, there was one you wrote years ago. I'm going to just make sure I have the name, right. Um, the keys to commercial acting. Right. That, and yeah, we just, that the newest one is up on Amazon, which the, yeah, that's, so, so the that first was the one first was called, book, right? the first one was actually called acting out. <laughs> so Ooh, hell, I like it acting out. <laughs> so we did that. And then I revamped it and did the keys to commercial acting. And now you have a brand new book that's out, which is how to book your self-tape audition, how to get booked from your self-tape. How to get booked from your self-tape audition. So we took everything that was going on from the beginning of self-tapes and this last year and watching thousands, literally, we, we realized we watched thousands of tapes and I took everything we learned, just like what I learned behind the camera to coach yeah. a class. 
I took everything we learned and put it in that book. And it was, and then I had people read it. And I was surprised that even experienced actors doing tapes were like, wow, I never knew that. Or I didn't think of that. Yeah. They're just what, I mean, they all got one nugget, one something out of the book that changed it for them and helped them book a job. One something is critical. Right. And I thought to them for whatever, I think the book's what, like 12 bucks for, you know, it'll pay off a hundred times when you get a job for $1,200, $1,500 non-union exactly. job that you book. Exactly. Or even a $30,000 union job. I mean, it's not, I've tried to keep it small and thin on purpose. All my books are to the point. We took out all the bubble gum that was in there and made it simple. It's so, it's so smooth. And, oh, I wish I knew where I have it. I have it. Where do I have it? I have to find it. Uh (laughs) Aha. No, no. I have it. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I have your book and I love oh, I love it, you for that. <laughs> I love how it feels and it's just wonderful and it gets right to the point and it's got amazing, amazing information in it that actors, every actor has to know. I mean, how do you book commercials if you don't know this? Well, well that's the thing. It's small enough that you can, I wanted to do it where you can read it in a few hours or yeah. a quick night so that the next day you're able to do your, your tape. Like it's both of my books are designed that within a day or two of reading it, you can apply it all. It's right there that's, where it's that's not important. a big, thick book with a lot of stuff in it. And there's no filler in it. Really. I have no filler. I want you to no filler. Well, let me just say, you talk about exactly how to set up your home studio. So they know exactly what to get backdrops. Why you think that they should use those particular backdrops, um, the lighting, the sound. It's so important. Your self tape, because that's everything nowadays right um and then how to shoot your video eye lines whether everything you should be wearing in your videos uh whether you need front cards or verbal slates um i mean everything about this is is what actors need to use deadlines oh uploading to services once you finish it your callbacks the virtual auditions what to be doing in those i love it (laughs) i'm glad you like it it. coming from you i'm Oh, thanks. Coming from you, that means a lot because your experience in the business, you know, I've known you a long time. And, uh, you know, someone like you who's on, you know, I I actually learned from you about how to give back to actors. It's the same thing. It's the people that you surround yourself with. It's being with a coach that's, it's about the other person, you know, and casting directors who make it about the other person, the actor, you know? Yeah. Treat them with respect when they come in. Yeah, casting directors can be a little bitchy and grumpy, but you have to understand why, what's going on when you're supposed to be casting an 18 to 20 year old and then they change it on you and you feel bad because you've got 30 actors walking in the door any minute or they've changed the script on them. And, you you know, it's stressful Mm -hmm. for us because we're only as good as our last job as well, you know? And I want to make sure I deliver a good tape and I get the best out of every actor. Yeah. And the fact that you were an actor makes you see that and like had that passion for actors. Oh yeah. Yeah, of course. And I know, I mean, I know the difficulty and yeah, it's stressful. I mean, we don't like hearing no, but you know, it takes a lot of no's to get that. Yes. Yeah, it does. What would you say is something like, I never really thought about it, but what do you, what do you think are some of the biggest mistakes actors make in commercial auditions? I just think not being prepared. You know, they just, it's so interesting how many people are not prepared. Um, They don't follow the instructions, especially now it's difficult with self tapes. They don't read the whole instruction sheet. They gloss over it. And I always say, read it three times to make sure you don't make those mistakes. Oh, they skim it. They skim it. They don't put in the information that we ask for. And then we sometimes can go back if they send their tape in early enough, but why wait till the the, the third day last 15 minutes and then how you're inevitably going to have a technical problem. Someone's going to have a technical problem. I can't tell you how many people go, I uh, wasn't able to upload in time, had a problem. Well, I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> you, you know, you're, you're making me now work extra to email you some sort of link or what, I don't know what you want me to do. And I've got to stop what I'm doing, looking at these tapes that have come in, you know, last minute that I only have a half hour to look at. So Mm. what ends up happening is most of those people are become in a category that I call if or maybe, 
Not if. Ick. Ick. If, no, if. Well, no, they're not ifs, but they're ifs. If we need more people, we'll look at you. I get you. If. But we've seen everyone else who jumped on it and sent it within. I mean, I usually say you're going to get an audition and you're going to have to show up on, you know, the casting office within 24 hours or less. So you can get a six o'clock, you know, call time, you know, audition time, and you have to be there by 10 in the morning. Well, that should be how quick you get your tape in. Yeah. You have that night or that morning. You should do it the next morning and get it in. Not wait, because those first tapes are going right to the clients. Like, we're going to look at them the next morning. And whatever's in, my clients want to tape the next, you know, that afternoon. Wow. And they're, they're like, whatever's in, just send me whatever's in. And then it's like, okay, we love some of these people. Now we play the beat game. Who's going to beat them out? And by the time you send them link three, it's like, well, we've really seen everyone. We'll look at the link three if we think we need anybody. And a lot of times clients are like, we're too busy. We can't look at link three. So by day three, those people are leftovers. Wow. How many people forget in the first two? Right. I tell people, you're like what's in the refrigerator, you're left over. And who knows if we find you in the back of the fridge again, you know? (laughs) Um, And I want them to, you know, and I go the extra step, you know, we'll give them a deadline and we'll still look at tapes that afternoon. That's because you're kind. That's because you're kind. Well, yeah. And, you know, it's even the same thing when we look at, when we look, you know, as you all, as everyone I'm sure knows by now, an average audition, which we used to see maybe 600 people, 400 people, 15, 10, 15 years ago, even 10 years ago, is now over 3,000 per roll. Wow. We're getting 3,000 submissions. I can't look at all those. And what we do is, to be honest, I've been told by a few casting people, is we overbook our self tapes. And the people that rush them in will be the, you know, will be the, you know, 100 that we get to look at. That makes sense because you can't look at everybody. No, you know, I want everyone to win, but you know, no matter how much you try to help people, some people will just not do the work. They will just kick themselves in the, you know, they'll just be their own worst enemy. They won't get their tapes in on time. They won't be prepared. They just, I really want why. <laughs> well, like I said before, and I asked why it's, it's not show up. It's called show business for a reason. It's show not business. show up. It's not show off. It's a business. And if you don't run yourself like a business, you'll run yourself out of the business. Mm. And I know we talked about that in the beginning, but you know that it is a business. You're, you know, like everyone says, what does your storefront look like? How do you represent yourself? What does your website look like? What does your headshots look like? How do you represent yourself out there? Where do, when do you, you know, if you are, you know, gonna send something in, why wait? Are you not excited to get in on that job? To have wow. the best opportunity, wow. which would be up front and first. What kind of things do you like to see in a casting network's profile? Um, that would make I'd them like, stand out. I mean, obviously, great headshots, right? But well, yeah, but in their, I mean, I usually like the headshots, um, and I like the completed resume. You know, and I like to see who they've studied with. You know, who are the, I mean, there are named people like yourself who are coaches as well that are names in the industry that are standard. Terry Berlin, Judy Kane, Mike Pointer, uh, you, because you teach great classes. I've sent people to you for years. No, I know. And uh, who do you recommend? I mean, well, tell me about the classes that you teach and then the people you recommend also. Well, so I was teaching um, and then we went online and then I kind of took a break. So, but I was teaching the basic commercial workshops, teaching basically the books and what to do and all the pointers, like I said, from behind the camera as a casting director and what clients want right now, because it changes, Mm. you know, every, you know, three, four or five years, something changes, you know, we were using backdrops forever and now everyone booking is not using a backdrop. They're putting themselves in the actual situation. Wow. You know, and I commercials. Yeah. Yeah. They want to see like the real Mm -hmm. theatrical. We've seen some, but uh, I think it's a sort of, you got to be a little careful on theatrical. Yeah. Right. Because you don't want to be too much where they're distracted from you doing the scene and they want to be able to see you and be there to do the scene. Yeah. Um, You know, we've been teaching um, theatrical now for about, 
five or six years. We used to, I used to teach it a long time ago. And then I got back into that because hmm. I went into the no acting kind of thing to be present in the moment of no acting. Like the art of acting is not acting. Right. Right. When you watch a picture, you're not going, wow, look at that. Look at those people acting on a film. You just believe it's happening. Yes. Um, but I like, you know, I like coaches that, I mean, I've always sent people to Ivana Chubbuck. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're talking about for theatrical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ivana, you send them to Margie Haber? Margie Ivana Haber, Chubbuck. Ivana Chubbuck. Who else? I'm trying to just remember offhand, but. I send people to Playhouse West for Meisner. I send people to, oh, my God. Who do I send people to for theatrical? <laughs> David Rosenfeld. There was a guy, and I can't remember his name. And, you know, I used to send people, and I'd tell everyone, like, there's Scott Sedita. Oh, Scott. For, I just had lunch with Scott yesterday, two days oh, ago. Did you? Yeah, Scott's great. There's um, there's a, there's another person was teaching out of Castaway before the pandemic. And Castaway. I and I can't remember who he was, but he, I would send people to three coaches. I'd say audit all three classes. Yes. And they would always pick him. Oh, and I'm like, why? So then I stopped, <laughs> but he was really good. It was really funny because he was a, he was an interesting gentleman and I would see him, you know, come to, you know, come to teach class while I was casting. And it was very interesting to watch um, the actors because I saw two people arguing outside of my office and I'm like, excuse me, can you take your fight somewhere else? And then all of a sudden he said, uh, Stephanie and Jim, you're next. And I was like, <laughs> oh, they're not fighting. Wow, I really thought you guys were having a real argument. That was a scene. It was so believable. You guys are awesome. I said, wow. I looked at that, looked at the teacher. I went, wow. I thought they were having a real fight and it was their scene. He goes, no, they're really good, Stu. They're really good. And I was like, yeah, they are. So, you know, there's, that was the point of just believability. Yeah. And I thought they were having a fight over a scene or something. So there's, you know, yeah, commercials, there's all sorts of classes that are out there. I always say it's great to take from a casting director. Definitely. I always say that too. And, or a session operator who, you know, has been running sessions. You know, I, I always tell actors that they've got to learn from people who are doing what they want to do that are in the business. Cause a lot of times people, oh, I took a commercial class at my community college. No, no, no. <laughs> I heard that too. And I'm like, no, but they, that's not the same. I went and got a degree in advertising. I was never told the positions at an advertising agency. I was going to go work in couponing right. because they don't <laughs> teach you all the things you need to know. It's yeah. like you learn in the field. And I tell people when you get out of college, you got to learn in the field. Yes. Just and I got a master's degree or BFA <laughs> is not enough. You've got to have professional training after that. Right, right, right. And, you know, I have, a, you know, I've always had the mouth that will say everything because I feel you don't sugarcoat it. you got to tell them the truth. That's and the best I mean, way to have success, right? I mean, you don't bullshit yourself. Really know your strengths and work on them. Know your weaknesses, work on them. You know, work, use your strengths and market to those. Your weaknesses, remove them and be right. honest about the types that you play. Don't, don't kid yourself. Yeah, no. And learn. I mean, it's, you know, the thing is, is if you're committed and you, you take note of yourself and yeah. you can definitely always check in and ask people, then you'll, you know, then you'll know, don't take the feedback as a criticism, take the feedback for what it is. Yes. And, and don't, then, don't take the criticism as a way to beat yourself up. No, it's Just, not. It's not a critique. I always tell not people it's not a critique. Think of it as a note. That's their note. The no, same no, way no. I look at a picture. That's my note. Wendy may love that picture and I may go, eh, or I may love a picture. And when you go, what are you looking at, Stu? Do you not see? And I've sent pictures to people, to agents and went, wow, I didn't even catch that. And I have an agent I love sending, you know, would send them to and go, you're right. You know what I mean? I didn't see that. Or so take notes. It's not critiques. I always say when you do something, there's no good or bad, wrong or right. There's just yeah. different. Yes. Yes. You know, because we'll beat ourselves up. We're actors and it's all about feelings and emotions. So we're always writing on feelings and emotions and we're the first people to beat ourselves up. Yeah. A hair's yeah. out of place. Something's wrong. You know, 
we're hardest on ourselves and we're always seeking approval. And when you realize you're seeking approval, get out of your way. Remember that casting directors are people too. Producers are people too. Shouldn't it be a song? Casting directors are people too. I mean, right. it's, it's, well, so, you, it's a melody. <laughs> well, I, for, you know, people forget. It's always like me, me, me. Read your email. Are you coming from me or are you coming from another place? Because there's other places to come from. It's always about, I need, I want, I want to be. It's very rare you get someone who says, hi, Stuart, I love something on your Instagram. Or they take note of who I am. Just a minute to personalize who they're talking to. Yes. And say, oh, I know you're busy and you're casting such and such. But if you have any possibility, I would love to audition for you. Or where they take a moment to understand what we're going through. Pause and get out of the me. Yeah. I'm going to help you out. All my assistants will say to me and my associates will go, wow, Stu, you know, I'll look at something. And I'm like, wow, that was a really nice person. Goes, oh, I already got back to them. They were so cool. I told them I would upload their video. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. As long as you're nice, you know, as long as you come, come from me and it's very few people, you know, will do it, but they'll go still uploaded their video or, you know, I, did you see the email from so-and-so I already wrote back and, told them I'll give them an extra few hours and I gave them, you know, I'm going to leave the link open, you know, so they're, so they could submit. Nice goes a long way. It does. It does. And that's Respect. what people, you know, actors are, it's a me thing. It's the validation continuously, but it, that's another thing I teach people. So you go, go from the opposite of me from whichever like direction you want to go. In. For actors that want to train with you, how can they reach you, Stu? So they can reach me through assistant at stonecasting.tv. And uh, that's probably the best way. Yeah. And when do you um, teach? Do you teach? Uh, what classes do you teach? So we teach, uh, we teach uh, commercials. Yeah. And I only, I don't have a, you know, beginning advanced. We try, we try to do it all. Like I, I believe it's a very, I don't say a simple process. It's a process, but I don't think you need to keep putting on layers. And that's just my thing about actors. And actors don't have the money, you know, to just keep piling into there, hoping that the next class will give it to them. Mm -hmm. I do miss the part of teaching, you know, with cue cards. And I do love bringing that into class. So right now it's a little stifled, but I teach all the basics you need to know, including uploading self tapes. You know, everything I try to put into my, my class there. Everything and they need from the beginning that they get the audition to everything that needs to take place. I take them right through it. We do That's the awesome. basic auditions, the slates, the energy, how to create it, you know, all the way into, you know, when I have other actors that are stepping back into the business, um, you know, now that we're virtual, we had people from New York and Chicago and people that, you know, have moved away from LA. They took the class because they want to get back in. It was so great to see him because yeah. I know when I was starting out and I'm like, oh my, and like it was, I mean, <laughs> I love it. Um, and they were like, wow, how it's changed. But even the older actors were like, wow, I never knew that or never thought of that. Wow. And so I always try to give them those things that just are not part of just a regular class or another actor trying to teach you. Yes, yes. You know, I know. And, an not to degrade, and not to degrade another actor, for teaching you, but they can teach you. Even when I took classes from other actors growing up, they can teach you what works for them, but they're not also behind the camera. Yeah. That's, I like casting directors teaching. That's so critical because then you really learn what is expected in the casting office from the horse's mouth. Right. Yeah. Oh my God. It's been so great talking to you, Stuart. I just adore you. And I want to know how can people follow you on Instagram? Uh, stone casting. Stone casting on Instagram. I'm a follower and I want to thank you for your time. If you don't have this book by Stuart Stone, get it, everybody. You need this. It's going to help you up your game and if, take classes with him. You want to learn from casting directors. Uh, those are the most important people to teach you how to book in the job, how to book in the room. And, and this is one of the nicest guys in show business. And he's a great teacher and he loves actors. He's been an actor. So take his class. Follow him on social media. Do anything you can to work with him. And um, <laughs> maybe one day you'll even be cast by him. And that'll be amazing, too. Uh, thanks so much for watching. My name is Wendy Lane Wright. And follow me on Instagram at Wendy Lane one You can watch my YouTube videos, Secrets of a Hollywood Talent Manager. And go to my free webinar at HollywoodWinnerCircle.com. And I will see you in the next
Instagram Live. Have a great day.